Hey everybody, it's Jeff Way with DetachDesigns.com and what I want to show you today is how you can clear your floats in the best possible way that you can. And by doing it with this method, it'll work in all browsers. Okay? So let's get started. You can see here, I have a blank.ESPX page and just an image. Okay? What I'm going to do now is add a style sheet. Now, once again, I'm using an, an ASPX page, but if you want to use HTML, that's perfectly fine. We're not using any of that functionality, so it won't make any difference whatsoever, okay? So, let's get started. I'm going to paste in some code. First, we'll create a div with an ID of box. Okay. And here, I pasted in just some generic text, and then an image. Pretty simple stuff, okay? So, div with an ID of box, we have an image that we're going to float, and then we just have some paragraphs. So, let's run this in the browser. And obviously our image is way too large, so we're going to reduce that. So using the web developer extension toolbar, I'm going to edit our CSS in real time. And we'll do div with an ID of box, we're going to take the image that's inside of it, set the width to 100 pixels. There we go. Now, let's style the actual div. And what I want to do, because this picture of the bull, it has a white background, so I'm just going to change the background color of the body to something a little different so we can see that difference. There, now we can actually see the borders. Okay, let's style the div. And let's give it some generic width, say 500 pixels. We'll set the margins to auto so that it's centered within the, the, the monitor. And let's give it a background color. Let's do something obnoxious like red. Oh, there we go. Now, as you can see here, we haven't floated any elements. So, the div automatically expands. Check. We haven't set a height. It will automatically expand to contain all of its contents. Okay? But watch what happens when we float in it. Float left. Okay. And let's set the image just a little bit larger so we can see the difference. Okay. Because we floated this image here to the left, it now takes it out of the HTML order. So as you can see here, because it's not taking up space, the div is not containing it. So obviously we need to fix this because it can create many problems when you're when you're developing. So there's a few things we can do to fix it. First, we're going to implement after sudo class. Now, first and foremost, this only works on modern browsers. So it'll work on IE7, it'll work on Firefox, it'll work on Opera, it'll work on Safari. And we'll get it to work on all browsers, we'll just need to add some extra code. So basically what this is saying is we're going to find div with an ID of box, and then at the very last possible moment before the div is closed, we're going to add some information. So, we'll do content. Content. And we're just going to add a period. Okay? Now, if you look right here at the very end, there's our period. It's at the very last possible space it can go before the div is closed. So we're going to use this to our advantage. First, we obviously don't want to see that period, so let's set visibility. There it goes. And we also don't want this area to take up any space, so we'll set height to zero. Okay. Now, we need to clear it, obviously. Okay. And now here's what's going to make it all work. We're going to set the display property to block. Now watch. Aha! Because we added this extra content, we cleared it and set the display to block, this is how it interprets it. It's saying, because we set the clear property, it said clear all of the elements. So it's going to clear this bool, and then we're going to add a period. But we set the visibility and height to zero and hidden. Okay? So that takes care of all modern browsers. Now, a few years ago, how would they have done this? Well, they would have resorted to adding extra markup. So they would have done something like so. 
Okay, and then they would have gone into their style sheet and done class of clear, clear both. And that's how they would have done that. But it's, it's obviously not ideal because we're adding extra code to our HTML that we don't need. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so let's go back to our style sheet. So, we're taking care of for all modern browsers. So how are we going to compensate for IE6 and below? We're going to compensate that with one property, okay? Now, the height property. Let's say we set a height of our box to 10 pixels. Watch what happens. We specified a specific height. So it will not take up more than that. However, IE6 has a bug that it interprets, I'm sorry, it interprets height the same way a modern browser would interpret minimum height. Okay, so if we change this to min height, we would be telling the div, under no circumstances can you be less than 10 pixels, but you can be as large as you need to be. So IE6 basically interprets the height property in the same way as minimum height. Okay, so we're going to use this to our advantage. Now, there's a way to target IE6. There's many ways, but the way I use most often is you could do star HTML, or what's much easier in my opinion is just the underscore hack. And say 1%. Now here, modern browsers are going to go through this code, and when they get this underscore, they're just gonna they're just gonna ignore it and go to the next property. However, IE6 and below are gonna come to this and they're just gonna assume it wasn't there or it was a typo and they're gonna read this. And because IE6 and below interprets height as a minimum height, it will automatically expand to contain everything. So let's copy this and paste and put it into our subtle sheet. And that's it. We only had to add one extra property to our markup to make sure that it works in all browsers. And let's go back into design view. And as you can see, this is showing the IE6 layout, and it's perfectly contained. And we didn't have to add anything to our HTML. So let's go over it one more time, if you need to. We set our div box. We set a generic width. This can be whatever you need it to be. We set the margins to auto so that it was centered. We set a generic background color. We'll come back to this. And now, after all of the contents in our div, we added a period, okay? But we don't want that period to show, so we set the visibility to hidden. We made sure that it didn't take up any space. We cleared it, because that's what we're trying to do anyways. And then we set the display property to block, so it takes up all of the available space. In our image, all we did was float it left and we took it out of the markup. And then, in order to compensate for older browsers, we added this hack. Underscore height is 1%. And this is interpreted the same way modern browsers interpret minimum height. So, now you can contain all your floats and you don't need to add any extra markup into your HTML. I hope this helped. If you have any more questions or comments, visit www.detachdesigns.com slash blog. Have a good day, everyone.